Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's Brother Henry. I'm at the Lamo Fashion Center on the West End in the open mall area at the AMC Theaters. Come to preach the gospel to those people standing in line waiting to see pretty bad movies that don't glorify God at all. So, here I am. Let's give it a try. tonight to preach God's holy, precious word, that deaf ears might be opened and blind eyes might be, might be opened to see, see the light of Jesus Christ, like these little ones here know, I always like to use them as an example, they know God more than their parents holding their hands. And I want to come out to proclaim God's Word, God's holy message. Some, some of you people are going to be crying worse than this little child in hell if you continue in your sin. It's not going to be a good thing to appear before the judgment seat of Christ blotted with sin, transgressions, and iniquities against His Holy Son who died on the cross for you. Some of you are Christians, so-called Christians that are waiting in line. I've seen a cross around somebody's neck. That doesn't mean anything. Going in there to see some rated R movie. Then you're going to go to church tomorrow, lift your hands up and say, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Well, that's being a hypocrite. And God will tear you to pieces and you will be buried underneath hell if you want to continue playing the part of the hypocrite. I just started looking at some of these movies. I walked around here in front of the line and saw some of the movies there and then looked at the posters behind me. And everything is evil and wicked these days. Every clown actor and actress has got a gun in their hand and they think they're all bad and they glorify hatred and violence and drugs and all kinds of wicked things and you take your children in there to see such wicked things try to cover their, cover their little eyes during the bad spots or mom covers the little boy and little girl's ears when when the actor, actress, blasphemous actor is, is speaking wickedly, cussing using F-words and stuff like that. Oh, you mustn't hear that, son or daughter. So I come out against these movies that don't bring any glor glory to God. Oh, I hope your conscience convicts you as I speak about these things. It, you need to feel bad about yourself, the sins that you've committed against God straight out of Compton, glorifying the gangster life. It's evil. Surely evil. Evil-hearted you to go spend money, your hard-earned cash, to go watch a movie where they're going to cuss and say God's name in vain and murder people, glorifying violence. The wicked and the one who loves violence, God's soul hates. You need to grasp that. You need to let that enter your heart. Because if you love violence and hate, being that wicked as you are, God hates you. Don't try to tell me that 
God's in everyone and God loves everyone. God loves you. Praise God. God loves you too if you repent and turn from your sin. Trust in Him alone. Not doing these dastardly deeds of going and seeing evil movies and taking your children. Oh, it'd be better if a huge millstone were tied around some of your necks and you'd be thrown into the ocean than to cause one of these little ones to lose faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, you've heard that verse before. Now, now you have a meaning to it. So I'm out here because I'm concerned about your souls and where you're headed. This is just another day to me out here preaching the good news. Oh, I may be an object of ridicule, may look foolish to you, but I don't care anymore. I love God that much that I don't care anymore and I will stand in the gap between you. I will stand against the devil and darkness and evil and everything that, that, that sinners try to justify for themselves and come against it. Because I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Wearing that armor of faith, shoes shod with the preparedness to spread the gospel of, of faith. What is faith? Do you have faith? Or do you just say you have faith? Are you walking in darkness? Two people walking in darkness, living in sin, you're both going to fall in a ditch. Well, you do not know when your hour is going to come. The hour may come tonight, right? For I see you. Oh, it just happens all of a sudden. I see it. People tell me, oh, pray for my mom or my dad. They're in the hospital. I had a friend uh, calling me up the other night. He's not in a storm. He said there's a tsunami coming. Pray for him. And I've been praying for him because I love him. And that's, that's what we should be doing. We should be caring for the lost if we declare to be Christians. To love people. That, that's why I'm out here. Because when God reduced the Ten Commandments into two, that second one was love your neighbor as yourself. Well, how do we do that? Well, to me and to God, being in, in, in line with His will, it's to preach His good news, to tell people to repent, to tell people to come to Jesus Christ before it's too late. Oh, I, I was out there in the front giving tracts out. It was some mixed feelings. It was like half, I'm good, I don't need that. And, and then other people were gladly accepting them. So it was like a 50-50 crowd out there in the front. When I, I always like to give out gospel tracts. Some of you have gotten them. And that uh, tells me uh, how I should preach. If I get a lot of rejection, you're going to get a strict sermon. But if there's a lot of Christians here, then you're going you're gonna to be edified with God's Word. So I, I thought I'd read from Luke 11. Jesus, God, the, the, the God-man, came down from heaven. You know who I'm talking about. He's not just a messenger or a prophet or a good man. He was God in the flesh. An easy way to prove that is that no other person who declares to be God can make the blind see, can raise the dead, can make the, the lepers clean and whole, can make the lame walk, can make the crippled normal again, <laughs> or calm the sea with his words. And the major thing is, is his resurrection, of whom there were 500 witnesses at once that saw the resurrected Christ. You know that it only takes one witness in a courtroom to bury you. That's all it takes. 
There were 500 witnesses. You can read about it in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul's declaration of the gospel. 500 witnesses testifying to the resurrected Christ. I didn't even need to read that to believe. I already believe. But some of you so hard-headed, trying to justify your sin, covering up your sin, living in your sin, that you'll go to hell for your sin. Instead of humbling yourself and putting aside your pride and coming to the resurrection knowledge of Jesus Christ, that He died for you, shed His blood for you. Some of you go to hell, rejecting that. Most of you are going to go to hell. That's what it says. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is, is the gate that leads to everlasting life, and few there be that find it. But I wanted to read from Luke 11. God was talking to the Jewish religious people of that time, and this will be to the religious people here tonight. The Catholics, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Buddhists, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Muslims, the Krishnas, whoever it may be, it's all religion. All man-made religion. It says in verse 29 of chapter 11 of St. Luke, And while the crowds were thickly gathered together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Oh, have you ever read of, uh, the story of Jonah to your little children? That God sent him to Nineveh? to preach repentance to the wicked city and he didn't want to go but he finally wound up going and the whole city put on sackcloth sackcloth excuse me and put ashes on themselves and repented God knew that they would repent if they heard his gospel message so Jesus is talking about Jonah he says that no sign will be given to you except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man, that's Jesus, will be to this generation. He said that 2,000 years ago. But listen. Listen what he said. He said the Queen of the South, that's Queen of Sheba, will rise up in the judgment with the men of the, this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed greater than Solomon is someone here. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Who said? For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. Beautiful. You talk to him. Don't talk to him like that. No, he's no. not. He's, he's not disrespecting you, bro. No, he's disrespecting you. No, he's talking bullshit. No, you're disrespecting him, man. Let's chill. Why is he mean? He's talking bullshit. Yeah, you, 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 need, you, need, to, you need, to need to stop. You need to stop. I know. I'm a. I'm no religion at all. Fuck your religion. Fuck your religion. Fuck your religion. What religion are you? Look at your face. So you, you, you need to stop. Yeah, stop. before you need no, you need to repent. You got the devil in your heart. This is truly a, a wicked generation. Thank you, sir, for for that. Appreciate that. Praise God. Tell a friend. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. Standing under this light, and I'm trying to be in, in the light, but spiritually, 
Jesus has His light all around me. The lamp of the body is the eye. You've heard that? The window of the, of, of the uh, body, the window of the soul is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But listen to this. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. So when you're putting violence, sexual immorality, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, dirty things that these movies project into your, into your souls, into your eyes, your eyes are full of darkness. You need to come into the light. You need to have Jesus in your heart, in your life. To shine that light within you so that you glow. So that you can be put on a lampstand for people to see. I hope you're all listening out there. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. You don't want to be partly in the light and partly in darkness, do you? You'll be in worse shape than your neighbor who hasn't repented and turned from his sin. Not talking about hypocrites again. Living the double role, living the secret life, looking good on the outside, but full of dead man's bones and wickedness on the inside, violence and corruption. If you're going to see movies that are filled with violence and corruption, there's violence and corruption is in your heart. And you're wicked as all hell. You need to stand up for the truth and stand up for God and hate that which is evil. Don't give money to these actors and actresses, these theaters that are evil, that show wicked films. Don't do it. Especially don't take your children in there. Oh, I hope your conscience condemns you as guilty. Guilty as charged. They're ungodly. Then you wonder why your children grow up violent, joining gangs, taking drugs, cussing you out, leaving in the middle of the night to go get drunk, to go have sex, to do dastardly things. You have no one to blame but yourself when these things happen in the future. Because you molded them. You molded them into wickedness. You should teach your children about Jesus. Teach them in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart from the faith. Teach them about Samson and Delilah, David and Goliath, Noah's Ark, Paul, the Apostle. Go teach them good things. Don't fill their minds with violence. Teach them how to use God's name in vain. Cussing like a Marine Sergeant, D.I. No. Teach them God's holy word. Instruct them, guide them, and edify them so that they can walk in the light. You need to be a good example. That's why I'm, I'm casting out lines tonight for you adults that your consciences may condemn you, that you may be beside yourself tonight and understand that you've broken God's laws, that you are guilty as charged. Those sins that you've swept under the rug, oh, that rug's going to be pulled out from, uh, from underneath you. And you're going to be accountable for your actions. You're going to be accountable for taking your children to see wicked movies. Shame, shame, shame. Go home and read the Bible to them. Teach them about God, how to walk holy in obedience. Teach them that Jesus, Jesus came down, the God-man, God's holy son. 
to rescue people that are lost and dead in their trespasses, died on the cross for you. Every answer is in this book, the Bible. Every question you have, there's an answer in this book. So I'm going to read you the gospel straight from the horse's mouth so that you will not have an excuse on the day of judgment. And that day of judgment happens when you take your last little breath and you are on a steel flat bed in a morgue, maybe with a toe tag on. And when you die, if you die in your sins, there's going to be nothing but weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. This isn't the end. You are a living soul and you're going to live forever. But where are you going to live? You're going to live with Jesus and your grandmother who, or great-grandmother that taught you about the Lord, but you shunned her and you rejected God's truth. You trampled his word underfoot, or you're gonna you're gonna be in hell with Satan and his angels, his demons and devils, tormenting you day and night, night and day, forever. You want that? I don't want that for you. I love you enough to to tell you the good news. I'm gonna tell you right now. Excuse me. Don't tell me I'm gonna be accountable. Don't tell me shame on me. All right? What? Don't fucking stand here. Hey, don't cuss at me. Don't yell at me. There's children me. here. Don't, that young girl heard you use the F word. Get away from me, you devil. I'm the devil. Yeah, you are the devil. In your interpretation. You, you are, are have rotten individual. fruit, and I can judge that. Wow. Out of, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Wow. If your Shame heart on. is a sewer, Shame your mouth you. is a toilet Shame bowl. Shame on you. Shame on your wicked, on you. vile mouth. Go see another R-rated movie. <laughs> Go away from me, Satan. Get behind me. Get behind me, devil. I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, that's good news, which I preach to you. This is St. Paul. Which also you received and in which you stand by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for nothing. Why do you like that? Went up to an altar call, said the sinner's prayer, now you think you're saved, and you can continue in your sin. No. That's the Billy Graham gospel. You need to repent. You don't like to talk about that. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. Well, yeah, He died. And that He was buried. Oh, He was put in a rich man's tomb. Joseph of Arimathea. And that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Does that mean anything to you? You're, you're dead in your trespasses if that doesn't make the little hairs on your arm stand up. If I don't hear any hallelujahs or thank you Jesus, you guys are on your way to hell. That should make you happy that God's Holy Son died for your sins. He's given you a way out. That's the greatest news I ever heard. You guys are like walking zombies. Dead in your sins. And that he was seen by Cephas. So that's Peter in the Greek. Then by the twelve, the twelve disciples. After that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. I talked about that earlier. Of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. So you're going to die in your sins. You're going to fall in your sleep and the angel's going to take you to heaven, to salvation. One or the other, you make the call. You make the decision. What you do with Jesus is going to determine where you're going to go when you die. 
If you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn in hell forever. But if you come to your wit's end and set your, your pride aside and receive Christ and repent and turn from your sins, then you will be saved. You must be a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You will now hate the things you've done before. You will hate these evil movies that promote wickedness and violence and all these, these the sexual immorality and adultery. You will hate that. And you will want to speak out against it. Anyways, after that he was seen by James and then by all the twelve apostles. Well, that's the gospel, excuse me. Hi, do you want water? Huh? Do you want me to get you water? I know like you're doing really good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank I'll you, sister. You Sister's going to give me a glass, cup of water. Now I'm going to read how you can become this new creation in Christ. It's, it's about being born again. Okay? He was talking to a Pharisee, a, I guess you could call him a closet Christian, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Reading from John 3. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. What did he do? He made the blind see. He made the crippled walk. He healed the lepers. He resurrected the dead. He calmed the sea and the wind with his words. Be quiet. He casted demons out. Similar demons that are within you that hate Jesus. Cast them out of them. And they became new creations in Christ. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, that's certainly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means that if you're not going to be born again, you're going to go to hell. Is that what you want? I don't want that for you. God's not willing that any of you perish, but all come to what? Repentance. Nicodemus said to him, capital H, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, you've already been born of water, the, the, the water sack broke, when you were, you were born as a little baby, praise God, and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Said it again. It's two times. It's a threefold thing here, folks. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, 